Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like to get some weeknight meal ideas, then just keep watching. For dinner this first night, we just had leftovers from lunch. For lunch this day, my husband and I took my mom to Olive Garden to thank her. She had been house-sitting and watching our dog for us while we went to Kentucky to visit my grandfather. So we went to Olive Garden and had a nice lunch. My mom had their chicken alfredo. My husband had the tour of Italy. And then I had their chicken and shrimp carbonara. And it was really delicious. We also had their salad. So that was a really delicious lunch, but we had plenty of leftovers. Over, so that's what I had for dinner. For several of the other dinners in this week's video, I wanted to work through my freezer and my pantry. I've got well-stocked pantries and freezers, gratefully, but I need to work through them. And so I had a package of gnocchi that we bought several months ago when we went to Georgia. I got it from a little Italian um, shop. So I wanted to use that up and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to make with it. And I saw Kat over at Southern Farm and Kitchen make this chicken and gnocchi dish and it looked easy, delicious, and it was perfect. I had a package of gnocchi that I needed to use up. So I'll link Kat's channel in the description box below. Make sure you check out her channel if you're not familiar with her already. I know you will love her, but let me show you how I made this. It was so easy and it was super delicious. Now I am having Kat's recipe and it's still made plenty for my husband and I and leftovers. In this crock pot, I'm going to add some chicken breasts. I just had these in the freezer and I thawed them. I'm going to season the chicken breasts with some salt and pepper and then Kat suggested a garlic and herb seasoning. So I have some of this, uh, it's the Aldi version of Mrs. Dash. So I'm just going to season up the chicken and then she also, for her recipe, for a full recipe, she used one can of cream of chicken and one can of cream of mushroom. But because I'm having it, I'm just using Using one can of soup and I actually have found that they make cream of chicken and cream of mushroom in one which is pretty cool so I'm going to use that and then add a can of water I just added the water and then kind of sloshed it around with my spoon next I'm adding some chicken bouillon and then I just stirred all that together I'm going to cover that with a lid and then cook this on low for about four to six hours until the chicken is nice and tender and cooked all the way through once the chicken is done, I removed it to a separate bowl and then I'm going to shred the chicken and then add it back to the crock pot. I tasted the chicken mixture and I felt like it needed a little bit more seasoning, so I added a little more salt and pepper, and then I'm going to add in my gnocchi. When you add in the gnocchi, just make sure that you break it up so you don't have any clumps of gnocchi. And then I gently stirred this together, I placed the lid back on, and I cooked it on low for another 45 minutes until the gnocchi were nice and tender. Um, I would check them though after 30 minutes, yours may be done then. But here's the finished dish. This was delicious, it was so good. Uh, it basically tasted like chicken and dumplings, just instead of the biscuit dumplings that I normally make just use the potato dumplings so this is a great easy way to make chicken and dumplings you know you don't have to roll out the dumplings or prepare them so I recommend you all give this a try it was really delicious thank you so much Kat for sharing this recipe for dinner the next night, I made French toast. My husband had been craving French toast and requested it, so I was happy to make it for him. I don't really use a recipe, but let me show you how I made it. To get started in this dish, I'm going to add my eggs. I'm using two eggs today, and that was enough to do, I believe, six pieces of French toast. So if you're doing more French toast, just use more eggs. Then I'm going to add in some milk. Next, I'm going to add a splash of vanilla and then whisk that together really well. Usually when I make French toast, I would also at this point add in some sugar or maple syrup and then a little bit of cinnamon. But today I'm using this Pepperidge Farm Swirl Brown Sugar Cinnamon Bread. So I'm not going to add that today. I just felt like it would be too much, um, you know, to add in the extra sugar and cinnamon when the bread already has it. So I'm just going to take my griddle and I preheated this to about 325 degrees. I'm going to add some butter and then I'm going to take my bread and dip it on both sides into the egg mixture and then I'll place it onto the griddle and I cooked this until it is nice and brown on one side and then flipped it over and cooked it another two or three minutes on the other side uh, again until it's nice and brown and the eggs are cooked all the way through and here is the French toast all finished I did sprinkle it with a little bit of powdered sugar and then here is my husband's plate so he has the French toast 
the powdered sugar, and then a slice of bacon. And he did use some maple syrup on his French toast. And that was dinner this night. And we really enjoyed the French toast with this brown sugar cinnamon bread. This was the first time that I'd made French toast with anything other than just like white bread or Texas toast. And it was actually really good. For dinner the next night, I made some honey garlic shrimp. This was a new recipe, but I had some shrimp in the freezer that I wanted to use up. And I also had just a little bit of soy sauce left in a bottle in their fridge. So I wanted to use that up and this recipe was perfect to do that. So I'm going to get started by making the marinade, I'm going to add in the soy sauce. And don't you know, I had exactly the amount of soy sauce in this bottle that I wanted to use up that I needed for the recipe. I should have bought a lottery ticket this day. <laughs> then I'm going to add in my honey, then the garlic, and then the ginger, and I'll have this recipe linked in the description box below. And then I just whisk that together really well. And then I am going to use that again to marinate my shrimp. Now, I am varying off the recipe just a little bit here. So the recipe says to only use half the marinade for the shrimp and to reserve the other half and use the other half as um, like a drizzle for the shrimp. But I didn't do that. I just added all of the marinade to the shrimp. I'm going to get as much air out as possible and then place this into the refrigerator you can let this marinate for as little as 15 minutes if that's what you have. I marinated this overnight. Um, so once the shrimp was nice and marinated, the next day I poured off the marinade. I've got it in this little pot. I brought it to a boil and keep an eye on it because you do have the honey in there. It can burn. But I just allowed this to boil for about 10 minutes and then use that to drizzle over the shrimp. To cook the shrimp, I have the skillet over about medium high heat. I'm going to add in a little bit of oil and then I've drained my shrimp on paper towels just to get some of that marinade off so that the shrimp sears and doesn't steam. So I've added the shrimp. These do not take very long at all. This is very quick. They take maybe 45 seconds to a minute on each side. I did add just a little bit of salt, not too much because you do have the soy sauce in the marinade. And once the first side of the shrimp is cooked, I'm just going to flip them over, cook them again for another 45 seconds seconds to a minute and then that's it. Like I said, shrimp take no time at all. It was so quick. Here is the finished shrimp and then here is that marinade. It is now become a really yummy glaze. And then to go along with that, I made some kind of like teriyaki green beans. So I had some of this soyaki sauce from Trader Joe's. I mentioned this before on my channel. We love this, but I had about a third of the bottle that I wanted to use up. So I just tossed some fresh green beans with that soyaki sauce. I cooked them in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes until they were nice and tender. And then I sprinkled them with some sesame seeds. And then to go along with that, I just cooked up some white rice. Here are the finished plates. So we have some of the shrimp. I did drizzle over some of that um, glaze from the marinade, added some chopped green onions, and then we have the green beans and the rice. This was such an easy and quick dinner, and it was delicious. It was really good. I recommend you all give this a try. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for a manly man sandwich. I've had this pinned for forever and I just haven't made it, but I wanted to go ahead and give it a try and I'm glad that I did. It was really delicious. To go alongside it though, I'm going to start out by making a bacon ranch pasta salad. This pasta salad is super easy to put together. Let me show you how I make it. In this bowl, I have my cooked pasta. Now I like to use small shells for this, but really you could use whatever kind of pasta you'd like. I just cooked this according to the package instructions. During the last minute or so, I did add in some frozen peas and then I drained the pasta and peas really well and allowed them to cool completely and added them to this bowl. Next, I'm going to add in some chopped up cherry tomatoes, some cooked and crumbled bacon, as well as some cubed cheddar cheese and totally make this your own. You can add whatever vegetables you'd like, switch out the cheeses, whatever you'd like to do. Now I'm adding in some homemade ranch dressing. You can use your favorite dressing. I've mentioned this before. Homemade ranch is so easy. It's just mayonnaise, milk. You can use buttermilk, regular milk. I've even used almond milk and then just dry ranch dressing mix. And it's so much better than bottled. It's really delicious. I've added a little bit of salt and pepper, not too much. And then I'm going to stir that until it's well combined, cover it and then place it into the refrigerator for maybe 30 minutes or an hour. Um, just to allow the flavors to get together. I mean, you can eat it right away, but it's best if you give it a little bit of time to sit. 
Now I'm going to get started on the sandwiches. I'll of course have the recipe linked in the description box below. To get started, I'm going to take some of these hoagie rolls. I've just sliced them in half. I'm going to add a little bit of softened butter to one side of the bread, and then I'm going to add my roast beef. You could of course use leftover roast beef or um, you know get it sliced from the deli. I'm just using this from Kroger. I'm going to add the roast beef, and next I'm going to add in my cooked onions. I just cooked up about a third of a large onion. Um, I sliced it really thin. I placed it into to a skillet with a little bit of butter salt and pepper and then just cooked it on low for about 15 to 20 minutes so once i've added the onions i'm then going to add the cheese i believe the recipe calls for gorgonzola or provolone i didn't have either of those on hand but i did have some of this sliced pepper jack cheese that we got um, when we visited uh, kentucky we stopped by the amish store so i'm going to add that and then i added in a thin layer of chipotle mayonnaise and then i'm going to place this into the oven on broil for just a few moments until the bread is nice and toasted and the cheese is nice and melted. And here are the sandwiches out of the oven. A quick note in case you notice that this looks different than the previous clip. When I went to put these in the oven, I hesitated. I was afraid that the chipotle mayonnaise would burn under the broiler. So I just took half of the roast beef that I had on the other side of the bread. I moved it over to cover the chipotle mayonnaise. And then I added just a half a slice of white American cheese to each sandwich. And then I placed it in the broiler. Here is that pasta salad. And here are the finished plates. We have the sandwiches and the pasta salad. This sandwich was good. It was delicious. I would definitely make this again. And of course, I make this bacon ranch pasta salad all the time. We love it. And for dessert this night, which I've mentioned before, we don't typically have dessert unless it's a special occasion, but I've been craving cheesecake so bad. And my husband happened to be having a lunch meeting uh, on this particular day, and it was right next to a cheesecake factory. So he was really sweet and stopped and got us a slice of cheesecake on his way home from the meeting. I am simple when it comes to cheesecake. I just like strawberry cheesecake. So that's what he got me. And for him, I don't know the name of the kind that he got. He said it's their seasonal version. I, I, I'm not sure what it is but as you can tell it's definitely got chocolate on it uh, but we really enjoyed both of our cheesecakes and that was dinner this night for dinner this next night, I decided to try a new recipe for a barbecue chicken pasta salad. I had some barbecue sauce and some other odds and ends that I wanted to use up. So in this bowl here, I'm going to add in the mayonnaise and the barbecue sauce. Just use your favorite barbecue sauce. Then I'm going to add in some salt and pepper. And you can totally make this your own. Use whatever vegetables and things you like or what you have on hand. You're cooking in your kitchen. There are no kitchen police that are going to show up and be like, oh my gosh, why did you use a pinto bean instead of a black bean? So just use what you like or what you have on hand. I'm going to add some drained corn some drained black beans, and then this would be a great way to use up leftover chicken. I have this bag of diced cooked chicken that I need to use up, so I'm going to add that. I had a red bell pepper in the fridge that needed to be used up, so I finally minced that. And then the recipe called for fresh jalapeno. I didn't have any, but I did have some pickled jalapenos in the fridge, so I chopped those up, and I'm going to stir that until it's well combined. I tasted this, and I felt like it was good, but it was needing a little something, so I added in a little bit of this barbecue rub. I'll link the recipe that I use in the description box below. I love making this, and then I just, you know, use it on chicken and all kinds of things. It's really easy. You probably have everything in your pantry, but I'm going to add that seasoning stir it and then add in my pasta i have some rotini pasta i cooked this according to the package instructions drained it really well and allowed it to cool i'm going to cover this with the lid and place this into the refrigerator for as little as 15 to 30 minutes if that's what you have or you can do it overnight and here is the finished pasta salad and here is my finished plate. My husband didn't eat until later. He was on a conference call, but I was starving, so I went ahead and ate. Now, a couple of the recipes that I've seen for this barbecue chicken pasta salad did suggest adding corn chips on top, which sounded kind of weird to me, um, but then I was like, hey, let's go with it. I had some of these barbecue Fritos in my pantry that I needed to use up, so I sprinkled some of that over the pasta salad, and then I just had this with some fruit. And I do have to say, the Fritos sounded a little bit weird, but it was delicious. It added a really nice little crunch and flavor so this was a really yummy dinner this was super easy this would be great to make and then have like for lunches during the week so i recommend you all give this a try 
For the last dinner in this week's video, I tried another new recipe for cowboy beans. I had some cooked ground beef in the fridge that I wanted to use up, and I also had several canned goods that I wanted to use. So I've seen uh, Taylor Elmore make this many times on our channel, and she has raved about it. I'll have Taylor's channel linked in the description box below, but this recipe actually comes from Jess and the Boys. Her channel will be linked below as well, so make sure you check out their channels. But like I said, Taylor has made this several times and raved about it, and I keep meaning to make it and she made it uh, recently and so I was just like okay I need to give this a try so let me show you how I made it this was super easy very budget friendly and it was really good like I mentioned just a second ago, I am using already cooked ground beef. I had this in my freezer. I just thawed it. But if you're not using already cooked ground meat, you'll of course want to brown it up and then drain it if you need to. So to this cooked ground meat, I'm going to add in my minced garlic, seasoned salt, pepper, parsley flakes, and a quick note, I am having the recipe and it's still made plenty for us. Then I'm going to add in my pork and beans and then some cooked and crumbled bacon. This is just leftover bacon from breakfast. You can cook up your own. You could use the pre-cooked bacon or honestly, you could just use bagged bacon pieces. Then I'm going to add in the brown sugar, Worcestershire sauce, yellow mustard, ketchup, Lastly, I'm going to add the sriracha. Now, if you don't like things spicy, you can, of course, leave this out completely. But honestly, with everything else going on in here, it really was not spicy at all. I'm just going to turn that on about medium low, and I allowed it to simmer for 20 to 30 minutes. To go along with the cowboy beans, I made some cornbread muffins. This Krusty's honey cornbread mix is delicious. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend it. I love this mix. I saw recently Kat from Southern Farming Kitchen made it. And when she made it, I was like, oh my gosh, I have a box in my pantry that I need to use up. So it was perfect. But like I said, I highly recommend that mix. I just cooked it according to the package instructions. And then for the cowboy beans, the final step is to add in some shredded cheddar cheese. Now I did add a little bit more cheese than what the recipe called for which is fine but it's just a little bit more yellow than what it should be but I turned this off stirred in the shredded cheddar cheese and just allowed it to sit for a few minutes until that cheese was nice and melted and here are the finished beans and the cornbread muffins and here's my finished plate. I forgot to get a picture of my husband's. I just had the beans this night. I wasn't super hungry. This was really good. Now, I actually make something called camper stew. We've made this for years in my family. I actually have a separate video on this. I'll link it in the description box below if you'd like to check it out. But this recipe really reminded me of that camper stew, but kind of on steroids because the camper stew recipe is a little bit more simple. Um, so this was delicious. This was really good. I will definitely be making this again. And that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.